on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday, January 18th, the LA Galaxy back in preseason. Head coach Greg Vanny talking to the media for the first time this season. Will Koontz in front of the media for the first time, I think, ever, sort of as the, as an L.A. Galaxy general manager. So we're going to be talking about that. Also going over the guys who are missing, the guys who are there, the guys who weren't there, which would be the guys who are missing. You know, we're going we're gonna to talk about all that, some injuries to talk about and all that fun stuff. So definitely want to uh, get you ready for all of those fun things. And plus, we have rumors updates, as we always do, as we're tracking towards the start of the 2024 season to help me do all that he's uh quote unquote back in the studio we're glad to have him back looking nice and toasty because it was probably like 18 degrees there it's eric the portuguese hammer Vieira. eric how's it going bud uh, it's going well it's jacket weather as you can tell uh it is oh, what is it right now weather check and it's everyone's favorite part of the show when yes. we t- tell the weather it is warmed up to a nice balmy 42 degrees 42 okay. but yeah we were in uh, nine degree territory we we're in the single digits dripping the faucets everyone was freaking out you know r- rushing to the grocery store for for bread and toilet paper it was a, a mass panic for for three days of a freeze the good news is yes. i was in anaheim okay. last week yes flew in just in time to beat the freeze didn't have any any flight delays didn't have any issues like that so good. you know all, all was good back in studio excited to be back got to see you last week yes we got we caught up caught we, some lunch got to see the old studio we high-fived we, yeah we high-fived you yeah. know you know it was a it was a fun time so i got to, it was weird being in the old studio it's like oh yeah we actually used to do this in person <laughs> in the same room and and we had a good time everything looked the same in the office the scarves are still there the the little mini golf soccer goals are there. So it was it was a nostalgic run. And it's kind of fitting that today is my six year anniversary of COG. So I had shout no out idea. to you. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. You, I, you were it, like, it, hey, this is hap- this is happening today. And I'm like, what? I'm like, it's six <laughs> years? No, no, no. It can't possibly be. It's like six years like seems two, wild. Two years, yeah. maybe, you know, that type of thing. Uh yeah, no, time c- flies, man. Congratulations. Man. Well, I mean, you know, it's uh it's always fun to do this show and I've had many co hosts over the over the years and uh, you know, we've sort of settled in on on some, I have to imagine that if we're going back and sort of trying to check like the history of COG, that you probably are one of the most showed, uh, you know, co-hosts that we've had in that time. Kevin actually, by the way, has a ridiculous record that nobody really pays attention to. That dude just quietly, just yeah. quietly every <laughs> Monday night, just yeah. just shows up, does the stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's awesome. But man, we love having you. It was fun sort of thinking because I started thinking about it. I was like, I was like, oh man, how that all started was uh, was was guys in shorts, right? And I think I went on, did I go on your podcast first? Is that what it was? Yeah, like you guys was, invited you know, me to come we, talk some Galaxy? Yeah, we were, you know, some young uh, up and comers, you know, needing some, some content, you know, amateurs in the game. So we said, you know, me being a huge Galaxy fan that I am, I said, let's, you know, this guy I heard knows how to talk, uh, you know, into a microphone. So let's get him on the show. Yeah. So it started with, uh, you know, you came to our turf for an away game and then, you know, yeah. it was uh, an exchange of co-hosts and, yeah. and I ended up on COG. Yeah, I think I think there was bourbon or scotch involved. Oh, yeah. We I used to you. love our whiskey on yeah. those nights. That definitely made recording a lot more fun. It was it's always a good time. Well, good. I'm <laughs> glad I'm glad you're here. And by the way, did me a solid coming out and covering uh, works crazy right now. And so just trying to uh, 
get through all that stuff and, and, and do things. But, you know, also for the LA Galaxy, things are crazy, too. And so uh, watching all this and trying to keep track of it, you guys did a great job, although I did enjoy uh, watching you guys, watching you especially freak out about like recording things and like, you know, having to hit the button <laughs> well, at the right time. Right. Fun, funny enough, you know, even, you know, before COG and I had my guys in shorts show that I was on for, for several years, I've been podcasting, quote unquote, you know, for, for a long time, but I've never been the guy who pushes the button. So, you know, being alone and having to be the guy who pushes the button, I did have a few moments of panic, especially when we had, you know, one of the white whales, Landon Donovan mm -hmm. on the show and Alexi Lawless, I, we recorded some content there. Uh, and just the fact that I, okay, did I record this? And then trying to go back, not quite knowing how the machine works. I'm like, wait, I'm not hearing anything. Did I, did, is there nothing here? Am I walking away? We have pictures with two big U.S. national team personalities and LA right. Galaxy connections, right. and I'm going to walk away with nothing yes. uh, can. So I, I, those those do exist. They are somewhere. I don't right. know if we're going to get them out. I, I have as bonus I need to, content. I need to put or, some stuff together and yeah, yeah. throw them out. But uh, yeah, I'm sure. So I, I know I've had some people ask some questions. So I'm sure that that's coming. But you know, I had some panic. So shout out to you for pushing all the buttons because that's that is nerve wracking to make sure that it all goes. And I'm I'm shocked. Right. I mean, obviously, this isn't an insult to you, but shock that things don't go wrong more often because it feels like it could so easily go wrong. Just pushing the wrong button or, you know, hitting something or something sliding off. There's a lot of room for error. So shout out to you for consistently hitting those buttons every Monday and Thursday. This is way back in the day, right? So um, let's see how, how it, you know, we'd been doing some some things. Uh, with the podcast and we had started gaining a little bit more notoriety, but I had never really been doing uh, interviews by myself. Whenever we started, Jared and I would do this. And I said, we can do that, but I've never, I don't know how to ask questions. Like I've never, not in school, I hated asking questions. I'm like, what do you want me to ask questions about something I don't know about? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, that's why you're supposed to be teaching me, right? So it never made sense for me to ask questions or to be, I don't know, curious in that way. And so I was like, I can't do interviews, the whole deal. Well, we started getting the opportunity to do interviews, but you had to do them like at a certain time. See, we're big enough now where we can tell people to just show up at eight. But at the, <laughs> you know, at the beginning, it was sort of like, well, the, can you do it at uh, 5.30 p.m.? Because they want to do it before they leave the office, you know, mm -hmm. the whole deal. So um, I remember we had Chris Klein on. And so uh, I was going to do the interview. So I typed out a whole bunch of questions doing it by myself. So I was so freaked out about the interview. So I start the interview. We go, we doing it. I'm like a good two, two and a half minutes in when I realized I hadn't hit record on anything. And so with Chris <laughs> Klein and I was like, I was like, Oh, Chris, you know what? Something messed up with the recording. Can we, I felt, I was like, this is so stupid. I feel like an idiot, <laughs> you know, and I'm the whole deal. And I'm like, Chris, can we, can we do it over again? I go, I'm so sorry. I go, we'll just do the same thing and just pretend like it's the first time. He's like, yeah, sure. No problem. He was really kind about it. The whole deal. But yeah, yeah. I totally forgot to hit the, the record button. Yeah. So at least you had him in the room, the, the way, Landon appeared. It was like an angel appearing from the heavens, you know, and he was part the seas were parting as he appeared. So if I didn't walk away with what we recorded in the moment, I wasn't going to, you know, <laughs> the chances of me getting Landon one on one again, that was never going to happen again. No. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that that ended up uh, getting recorded. But yeah, exciting times and a good time at the conference. It's it's a big deal. I don't know if I, you know, recapped it. I think I touched on it last week. But uh, if you're a coach at any level, I know it's billed as kind of a professional coaches thing. But right. if you're a coach at any level, there's seminars and demos, you, you know, I could, I could see if I were coaching, you know, at, at, a, at a level or at a club or at a school that you could walk away with new ideas. There's a, every type of equipment possible in this exhibit hall, all, all types of technology and different things. And then of course, you know, where they kind of get their shine is with, you know, the celebrities that are there, you know, your, your Brad Friedel's and your Eddie Lewis's and Carly Lloyd was within, you know, reach of us, you right. know, we didn't kind of have our in to talk with her. So you just kind of a lot of fun being in media row. And also want to shout out Eli Lesser as well at Eli Lesser TV, got a chat with him, hadn't met him in person. He cranks out uh, MLS content and soccer so content crazy. that you guys, a machine he's with a, the content. Amazing. So I, yeah. yeah. So I got to chat with him quite a bit. You know, he's a fellow G. So I just want to shout him out as well. Awesome. Hey, Eli, what's up, dude? We'll have you on the podcast sometime this year. All right. Uh, reach out to either hammer or myself. We'll get you on for sure. I'd uh, love to have you. It, it's just, it was a lot of stuff. I feel like there's a lot of whenever you have like an anniversary like this, there's a lot of stories like we could tell and things we could do. I'm sure I, I was talking uh, in the discord and I was like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we were talking about being good at 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 uh, at rumor news. Right. Like and and I've had to develop that skill over the mm -hmm. and the major snafu I had was with Sasha Kleshin and people were like, well, tell that story. I haven't heard that story. So maybe at some point in this show, I will tell that story once again, when we talk about a rumor that I was hundred percent right on 
and I told you also, and then I, and then today it came out that I was 100% right on that rumor, and I told you also. But I don't want to get into I told you so so early. I want to save that for a little bit. Fair later. enough. Yeah, so. you don't want to. Yeah, exactly. You don't you don't lead with that. You know, you let that eventually that's, show itself. That's right. That's right. You know, you don't, <laughs> I don't need a big head about it. Um. So anyway, let's get to uh, some of the galaxy news that that came over the last week and obviously a show on Monday and then some news and releases stuff. Now we've already talked about uh, Alex Akala and, and sort of his transfer to Manchester city or the city group. Um, and so we were sort of waiting on the numbers and I said, man, I can't wait to hear what the numbers are. Well, the galaxy officially announced the move and then uh, trusty Tom, Tom Bogert uh, came up with the information on Alcala and what that numbers are. And if Tom says it, we trust Tom, right? I'll tell you who we trust. I won't tell you who we don't trust because they just won't be mentioned on here, but we trust <laughs> Tom whenever he says this. And I can tell you that I did a little digging as well and was able to figure out that these, this seems that these were pretty accurate numbers as well. So uh, Tom says sources uh, have told him basically the LA galaxy will receive a transfer fee north of $300,000 plus retain a 20% sell on clause in the deal that sent the Mexican youth international Alex to call in Manchester city. So that was the, the, the big deal. Now, if you'll remember, this is a deal that was spearheaded and pioneered by Dennis DeClosa whenever DeClosa was, was with uh, the LA Galaxy. And so this was sort of his baby. And at one point he came on the show and we talked about this deal, sans numbers. We didn't want to tell us numbers. Um, and actually, I remember asking him, not on the air, but whenever we were having a separate discussion, if he could say, he goes, you know, they're really sensitive about the numbers. Like we can't talk about them until it's like done type of thing. So um, it was, it's really interesting to see those numbers. So the 300,000 Dollars is a lot for an academy kid whenever you figure yeah. like what that is. Now, nothing for Manchester City and the city group and in the overall terms of things. The real there's there's a couple, I think, benefits here that maybe we haven't talked about. And one is the LA Galaxy get mentioned selling a player from the LA Galaxy development academy. Academy. That's the kicker, yes. To mm-hmm. Manchester City, a world giant in football, right? That is a all you know, all, all, all what is it? Uh, all rise all tides lift rising boats. Yeah, What's all it? rising tides, tides lift, lift all, all boats. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what it is. Um and that that's one of those. It's you know, Manchester City, yeah, it's not a big deal for them. I about doubted even like really ricocheted off of a ton of radars, right? But Fabrizio Romano was talking about it. So it was probably interesting yeah. enough for them Notable. to to want to put that in there. Um, so that was one thing, the just the name recognition and being side by side. The other thing is the 20% sell on clause, because if you take that just at a real low number and let's say he's in the Manchester City Academy, he's doing the stuff, he's playing on some of the lower level teams. They eventually end up selling him for, you know, five million dollars, which isn't a ton of money. Right. I mean, whenever we're talking about a whole bunch of but five million dollars would get the L.A. Galaxy another million dollars. Right. I mean, this is. This is significant in all of these things. And so it's something to sort of pay attention to. Is that money coming right now? No. Uh, can you count on it? No. But it's one of those things that eventually if Alcala develops the way that they do, um, that you could you could see some money coming back. Yeah, I think we, we've seen some recent moves with G2 players, uh, you know, making moves over overseas or to other, other, other clubs. And $300,000 on its own for an academy product, that's already, you know, you, you've done well. Uh, but the fact that this was a deal, and I like that you mentioned DTK getting the love there because this is something that he had his fingerprints heavily involved in building that relationship. Um, that that's that's he gets credit for that. And to me, the biggest part is the sell on the twenty percent um, because now he, whenever he does make that sale, because chances are, if we're being realistic, that he's not going to break into Man City right now, right. treble winners, Champions League, like breaking into that as a young player is going to be really really difficult. So most likely he's going to get loaned out. He has success on his loan spells. And then that's when the sell happens. And then that's where the Galaxy are going to be able to make their money. This reminds me of the Uriel Antuna move. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe he was uh, a Man City. Well, yep. I believe he was connected to Man City and then loaned out. And the, it ended up happening. I, I, don't, I forget what his transfer fee was yeah, when lo- he landed at lo- Cruz Azul or Chivas or... Yeah, he landed it. I'll, I'll look this up. I'll fact check this after. But it wasn't for nothing. They paid nope. a good chunk of money uh, to get him to Liga MX. And so I think if you get something comparable to that, uh, which is you know Alex Alcala playing for the you know Mexican youth national team, right. that's a likely move that he can make down the lines. Then the Galaxy can end up with you know two, three million, four million, five million out of that deal, and that's a huge, huge win, a huge success. And then to your point, now they become this feeder system for Manchester City as the American, even though they have the city group with New York City, you know, 
in Southern, they could be the Southern California wing of feeding Manchester City, and this this relationship begins to develop. You know, we see this develop. You know, whether it's an official partnership right. between the clubs or not, but when these relationships are built, this is something that can continue to move forward. So, to me, good business on its own for just the three hundred k, and then when you consider the sell on clause and the possibilities uh, with the talent that this this kid has, then it, you know it really is a great bit of business for the LA Galaxy. Well, uh, that's sort of that news. And, uh, is, you know, somebody in the Discord was asking me, I wonder if that deal changed over time. From what I can tell, it didn't. It was it was sort of the original deal that, that got put into place, right, which was this 300 plus uh, and the 20 percent sell on was was certainly locked in there. So, again, good that that was done, you know, years ago. Um, and then it comes to fruition and is able to sort of get there. Uh, by the way, two dollar super chat from Nelson. Here's to Hammer's sixth year anniversary. Yep, congratulations there. You get two, you get two dollars. I mean, you won't get anything. <laughs> But <laughs> I was gonna the say, show gets yeah. two dollars. It's fair enough. It's, it's for re- it's for the good of the land. It's right? for, it's for my scouting fee, really. What there it you is, go. you know. Was, <laughs> I, th- there's a sell-on clause somewhere I'm down sure, the line. I'm that sure there you'll, is. you'll get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's how it goes. Uh, the other bit of news that the LA Galaxy came out with officially signing Miguel Berry. Now, um, no, we're not going to hype this up. No, we're not going to get excited about this. But this is something we were expecting. And matter of fact, I already had him added to the roster because I knew that there was no reason they were changing his rights for for all of this. Yeah. Uh, basically uh, signed through the end of the 2025 MLS season. So it's a two years plus an option for 2026, right? So 2024, 2025, and then an option for 2026. Um, you know, when we talk, we need to talk about expectations with Barry, because I think we've talked about it, but I want to reiterate this, this, the galaxy aren't expecting that they're getting this world beater. Um, they're certainly not expecting that they're getting the guy who was with Columbus and, and, you know, sort of broke out with Columbus and had all this potential and everybody's like, man, this kid could be really good. And then really not a lot developed from that. Right. Um, but what you are seeing from Miguel Berry was that the Galaxy thought that there was more value in this and getting a guy who plays differently than Dayon and more of a target striker, right? A bigger body, um, all those things that sort of make him opposite. It was better to get this and do this deal than to sign a draft pick in the second round in which they had another second round pick, right? It was sort of like we can get more value out of getting Miguel Berry um, than really we think of any of the draft picks that we could get. Now, Um, I don't think anybody's banking on him having Columbus numbers, but if he does, then it will be a great move, right? Like it's one of those, it's, it's really only upside because I don't expect that the salary is all that expensive. I don't expect that the, the galaxy, you know, had to, had to really stretch. And this is probably a pretty smart contract knowing the way that Will Kuntz works and all those things. This is an easily, uh, sort of eatable contract whenever all is said and done. And it's probably not even a senior team contract. It's probably a supplemental on the supplemental roster. So it doesn't even hit the salary cap, right? So those are the things that I see with Miguel Berry. Those are the expectations. If he almost doesn't play, it's probably okay too, right? It's like one of those. Well, it's like, you know. It, we were joking about this, I think, when they've got the rights for, for Miguel Berry, when we had talked about that on the show, and we said, this is probably the most we're going to talk about Miguel Berry. The answer was, that was the most we're going to talk about Miguel Berry, and then when they officially signed him. Yep. So now this is the kind of the the culmination, the end of where it's going to land, talking about Miguel Berry. So again, you're right. The expectations are not high. I think the comparison when I take like the one-for-one – this to me is the Preston Judd replacement. Right. So, you know, Preston Judd is now in San Jose. As much as I liked Judd and the kind of, you know, aggression and the, you know, directness that he he brought on the field, he, you know, it ended up not coming to fruition in terms of goals and he had opportunities to start games. So you get someone, you know, in Miguel Berry who technically has more MLS experience and, and more goals under his belt. So, you know, it's an upgrade in that regard. But at the end of the day, is he going to see tons of minutes? Right. It's all going to depend on probably the health of Dayan Jovalich and what other what other options there may be coming in uh, at striker. If there's another, you know, like you said, a veteran striker or someone else becomes available, uh, you know, after the summer transfer window, and then maybe you know you're able to sign for half a season on Tam and some different things, then that changes kind of the output on what he's going to bring. But I think this is going to be probably, uh, you know, the the last mention of Miguel Berry for, for quite some time. Uh, maybe he'll, he'll get some Coachella love, probably. Maybe. So maybe he'll be this year's Farai Mutatu. He keeps showing up on the score sheet, getting people to ask questions. And uh, so that that's probably, we'll start, we're, we probably are still in 
the month of Miguel Berry. But then once you know the season starts, I think it'll it'll start to drop off. Man, Atlanta, I you know it's 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 sad in a lot of ways, but Atlanta fans are still like, I can't believe you signed them and all this. It's like you don't understand. There's like no expectation here. I'm yeah. telling you, <laughs> I, I I you know I I get the idea. They think that there could be an upside, right? And if there's an upside, they're going to capture that upside and they're going to do it at a discount, right? So. Um, all, all those fun things. The Galaxy also went out and released their preseason roster, which we should talk about because the guys are back in camp. Training's going on. Uh, there was media availability today for the very first time. We're going to get to that here in just a second, but let's go over the preseason roster, right? You have Jonathan Bond. Uh, goalkeepers basically on the preseason roster. There are four. Uh, Jonathan Bond, Ethan Brandt. Ethan Brandt was the 2024 MLS Super Draft pick, right? You have John McCarthy and Novak Michovic. About that here in a second. Defenders, Julian Ade. Uh, Martin Caceres, uh, Mauricio Cuevas, Riley Delgado, and Delgado is an LA Galaxy Academy uh, player there. You have Marcus Fercranis, Chris Mavinga, Harbor Miller, an LA Galaxy Academy player, Jalen Neal, John Nelson, Miki Yamane, uh, the new signing. We'll talk about him here in a second. Maya Yoshida, who very well should have a C next to his name because he's going to be the captain. Uh, you've all you've all been told it's 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 going to happen. This is if you if you see anything around Maya Yoshida, you will see you will see captain whenever you see him. Uh, and then Eric Zavaleta, uh, your midfielders, eleven of them: Daniel Aguirre, Gaston Brogman, Edwin Edwin Cerillo, Mark Delgado, Diego Fagundes, Tucker Lepley, Lepley, the 2024 MLS Super draft pick right jonathan perez johnny perez uh ricky Puj, nicholas schleto so uh guillermo barra schleto right um this is his son yeah that was exciting to see his name on there yeah and and he's been he's been i, I don't think so quietly because if you're around the club you hear mm -hmm. his name a lot but he's been he's been in this academy position and you've sort of been paying attention everybody goes is there any relation to guillermo i'm like yeah that's his son like <laughs> you think? And, yeah. and i think gbs is still living in southern california right now um and his son going and playing for the la galaxy academy and so uh he's up playing with the senior team right now as this is a short roster uh you know you have uh sergio uh villa villa pando via pando I don't that even, sounds right. Yeah, LA Galaxy 2 player. I haven't I haven't met him yet. Uh, Gino Vivi is in there as well. Forwards, four of them. Miguel Berry, Aaron Bibu, uh, which who we've talked about in uh, looking at an LA Galaxy 2 player, had some time actually up with the this senior team. Last year. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Dayon Jovalic. And then Rubo, Ruben Ramos Jr., uh, LA Galaxy Academy player there. So that is your preseason roster. Short roster right now. Uh, very short roster. And and we know that there's still players that need to come in and a whole bunch of stuff. So they have Academy guys and a lot of the, the senior team players. We're talking about the Academy guys being in there. You have some LA Galaxy 2 guys. So they're filling out the positions they need to sort of get this preseason training. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. So uh, that is the roster that has come out. The other thing that comes out from that, Eric, is, of course, uh, the LA Galaxy preseason schedule. And for the most part, you know all these except Saturday, January 27th. That's right next weekend on Saturday. Uh, the LA Galaxy will be hosting the San Jose Earthquakes in a closed-door scrimmage at Dignity Hill Sports Park. So, you know, that seems like it's one of those early ones, Eric, where they're going to play like three halves. Yeah, you three, know? Three. those are my favorite. <laughs> no, th that's for I Mutatu season. That's right? where, you know, you're guessing who has the goals and the, the other teams sometimes tweet out, you know, line up. So that's where it gets it gets to be fun times where, you know, Chicharito is not officially a Galaxy player, but, you know, he scores goals, so you can't say it. So maybe if, uh, you know, I know there's the rumors that are going around, they're involved in other teams and other squads right now. So maybe you're not going to see stuff like that, but it is always a fun, exciting time. There's always a little bit of a, a cloak of mystery uh, with the preseason. So, you know, it, it's it's exciting to see those academy players get the moves, but at the at the same time, it's like, okay, let's get the Let's get the full roster in here. Let's see. Let's see what we can start doing. I also, while we were, you know, right. looking at those other things, I did look up. Uriel Antuna went from technically Man City to Chivas for three point two million. Okay. So again, if you get twenty percent of that, add it with, you know, the the three hundred thousand, then you're sitting, you know, close, shy close, of a close million, million dollars. dollars yeah, right around. Yeah. So it's 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 in that range. So again, if you get a three million, four million transfer fee for Alcala somewhere down the line, then that's still a, a, a million dollars for an academy player 
who you developed for two, three years, right. that, that's a pretty good investment. Not too bad. Uh, Adam, by the way, $2 Super Chat says, any idea of a name of a striker for the summer? They're not going to go after a striker if they don't need one. So that's that's the first thing. Um, well, it's dependent on, it's yeah, dependent what, on what Dayan Jovovich's goal, goal total is by the summer. That that can that will dictate that. Yeah, but by the way, I Got Jam says is this uh, for Kranis' year he breaks into the first team. Very well could be. Uh, I think he's going to get a chance to. He's he's down that, that in the depth a little bit. But as we know, um, right now, Galaxy thin everywhere just in terms of how it goes. So watch him in the preseason. Remember Jalen Neal came in and they were sort of like, we're going to give him some chance to develop and the whole deal. Mm -hmm. And then Jalen Neal went out there and played and they're like, Greg Vandy's like, I'm not taking him off the field. Like, <laughs> why would I take him off the field? He's been one yeah. of our better defenders, you know, that type of thing. I think for Kranis could have some chances to do that. There's just, I think the back line is set up more for, for Kranis not to, um, not to have, be as able to break in as easily as Neal did. So, um, but, more depth. But, but it is a fair question because they did spend some time on the youth national team together. If you watch some of those uh, either U20 World Cups or, or one of those, you know, uh, under 21, I forget what the age brackets, U23, one of right. those World Cups, they were the center back pairing. And even, you know, for Kranis was favored in some games where Neil uh, came off the bench. So, again, he is someone who has that relationship with Jalen Neal. Uh, and he, you know, plays center back. So <laughs> Yoshida, obviously, you mentioned he's going to be the captain. He's going to be the guy. But you could see, you know, the building of a, you know, for Kranis Neal backline down the, you know, in the future. They, they can be your your center backs. Uh, you're right. It is tough to break into, but there's, we've seen it happen before. Neal being the surprise that he was for Kranis definitely is right there on that same level in terms of, you know, talent and, and youth national team prospect he he's he's in the conversation so it's a fair fair ask uh la galaxy outsider uh five dollar super chat blink twice if you're able to talk about why klein isn't on that roster carson klein right is carson what? klein i yeah, was gonna say carson yeah klein. Every, before everyone freaks out yeah, yeah. yeah. carson klein um yeah, if, is, if, is, if, if scalotto it has a child on, right. on the team then you know yeah. chris klein could have a child on the team as well so carson klein i, I don't know the details on why I don't know. he wasn't on it but he yeah. he was getting lots of G2 time and the academy time. So, you know, maybe he will be at, at Coachella when we see him there. Very, very well could be. Um, I, I think the other thing is just uh, usually this is probably more positional um, than anything else, which is they need guys to fill certain spots and that's what they're doing right now. But I also think that there's a, uh, there's certainly a, a certain like way that you go about this, finding the guys who are close, who are you're sort of saying, man, these guys could be breaking yeah. out. These guys could be not just academy kids, but being like, hey, these academy kids could be going to G2 next year. Let's get them some senior team minutes with everybody. Really start to pick that pace up of how they're going to play whenever they do it. So um, there's a lot of uh, interesting things there. So thanks, LA Galaxy Outsider, for that. Um, I, you know, I wanted to talk about the press conferences today because we got to talk to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I was on Zoom for this. So I was not uh, not in person. Uh, from what I could tell, Scott French was in person. Damian Calhoun was in person. Alex Ruiz was in person. Alex doing a great job. I think Mike Gray was in person. Uh, I think there was some Japanese media uh, media in person uh, as well. And the reason I say that is because Maya talked a lot of Japanese to some people who were there. So I imagine that that's, that's probably why that was. I was um, going to say, if, if they're smart, they're sending people to do double duty with the Dodgers. Right. You know, they already yeah, got, they already got a multi-sport. Yeah. They've got a whole team over here. I'm sure. Um, so we did get to hear from Greg Vanny, but first we got to hear from Will, Kroon, Will Koontz. Will Koontz's first sort of uh, media availability in front of uh, the reporters as general managers. And I don't think he ever had any like media availability before um, because you usually don't <laughs> put the lower level yeah. guys sort of in there. So uh, it was fun to sort of see him up there answering questions, the whole deal. Now, uh, there definitely were some takeaways. Um, and I'm going to fire up the uh, the machine here so that way we can we can figure out exactly what those takeaways were and hear from Will Koontz. But what, while yeah. you fire that yes. up, I do have my takeaway. And I believe Alex Ruiz was the one who who posted it. We do have a new number seven. Mr. Diego Fagundes. Number seven. will be wearing the number seven shirt, the famed Efrain Alvarez number seven shirt. Uh, so, you know, I think that was that was the big to do. <laughs> you know, if you're on Twitter and on X today is that, you know, when they come out with their kits and the new numbers. You know, with all of the number issues that Fagundes had last year with he, Chicharito's number. He was number joking and, around. Yeah. They, the, yeah. the reporters were joking around with him. They were going, uh, I think Scott French was like, did you make sure that nobody else on the roster yeah. had seven? He goes, I'm pretty sure there's not. He goes, I told everybody I want to get my roster set early this year so we don't have any problems so I can go out there and play. So um, most yeah. famously worn by, of course, Robbie Keane, I would think is the biggest oh, number seven. That's who right? wore it That's the, most the guy. So, okay. Not, yeah. Alessandrini seven. You yeah. know, Robbie Keane seven. Not Efra. Not Efra. Unless we want to call Fagundes the Efraina Alvarez Breakout Player of the Year award. I, I you know, mean, this is the year. 
this. You, he's going to be one of those, and and this is going to be if he hits the potential that I think the Galaxy are hoping he can. He could be one of those like comeback player type thing yeah. because he didn't have a good year last year. Um, then the turmoil with switching teams didn't sit well. The timing of it, having a little baby, like all those things. That's and, that's not and fun. being you know. <laughs> I, I say I say this somewhat tongue in cheek, but like a club legend at Austin, as little as as Austin has been around, he was the one face that was attached to that organization. So yeah. I think there was a lot of, you know, it was just an awkward situation for him. But he's a proven talent in MLS, and I think that you know if, if you're considering it a depth piece, and you know where the schedule congestion starts to come into play, he's definitely someone who the Galaxy are going to be able, you know, hopefully be able to rely on this yeah. season. Well, uh, one of the things uh, that was asked right away is sort of, you know, how everything's going uh, with things. And so uh, Will was able to sort of uh, turn that into a little little talk on the designated players. Um, so uh, I believe it was uh, Scott French asking, you know, are you pleased with the work you've done so far? So here is uh, Mr. Will Kuntz talking about, uh, you know, the work the Galaxy have done. And he'll throw in some DP updates for you. Please, with the work we've done, I think we've added a few really good pieces, some domestically, so Miguel Berry, John Nelson, John McCarthy, all guys who bring us really good depth. And internationally, obviously, Miki Yamane has been the sort of confirmed official signing, and then uh, we're very close with uh, one DP target, and then uh, I think in a pretty good way with a second or would be our third DP. So. We really feel it's important to have our squad together as close to the start of the preseason as possible to give us the best chance to succeed because we obviously have a big game coming at the end of February, but we also open up on the road a number of games in our first 13. So really important to have as strong a squad as possible as we set out. All right, so there you go. Now, what he said was, you know, basically uh, that they're real close on one DP. Uh, that's get Gabrielle Peck, right? That's the one that we all know. Listen, it's still there. I don't know what the exact holdup is, but there's it's not a bad holdup. Well, I think they're just waiting as everything is. It, is he with pre Olympic? He's with the pre Olympic pre Olympic squad in Brazil, and it is my understanding, if the you know rumblings are to, to be believed, that that whatever training he has going on, that's going to be going on with the pre Olympic squad. Once that is complete, that's when the Galaxy are going to make the announcements. That's when, you know, everything's going to officially kind of go through. So everything behind the scenes is allegedly done from what what I'm hearing. And it's just a matter of, you know, him going through whatever he needs to go through with that Brazilian pre-Olympic squad. And then once those duties are completed, then the focus is going to shift to the LA Galaxy. That's that's what I've heard, the rumblings. And I think uh, from all my conversations, that that seems correct, right? And so we're we're just... We're waiting for that. The whole deal is, though, it's sort of like, oh, okay. Well, there's there's certain people who are saying, oh, well, that pre-Olympic tournament can actually last for a little while, right? Because this is figuring out the Olympic spots, I think, for South America and some of the some of the other places they're trying to do. Uh, it can last for a while. And so uh, with Greg Vanny talking, we can certainly hear from him in a little bit. He says, you know, they're hoping that basically they're, the next DP will be in right around the start of February, right? So that's not too far away whenever everything goes uh, the way that it's going to go. And you're also getting guys, uh, if both of these rumors are sort of to be true, uh, that are in season form. This is not, mm-hmm. these, these, you just have to mix them in, well, right? That, that's the one thing I think we we referenced uh, Diego Fugundes. Uh, someone mentioned maybe he didn't come in completely fit. We've talked about Douglas Costa when he first arrived. Uh, you know, there, there were some issues there. I think that's something, you know, Gabriel Peck, based on the season that he had, last season and what he'll be playing with in that pre-Olympic tournament that whatever worries you have about him coming in, you know, with fitness and being ready to go 90 minutes, I think those concerns are probably not going to be an issue when he does become available. Now, the other part of this was he thinks that they're in a pretty good, in pretty good with the second sort of target for designated player, which would be the third DP. Um, from my understanding and my talks, that second or, or quote unquote third DP uh, that they're looking at is Joseph Paintsill. Um And so however that has progressed has at least progressed to a way where Will is saying, you know, he feels like they're in a good spot. That seems to be the case. Now, uh, the latest rumors on that, we're getting a little into rumor tracker, but why not? Let's do rumor tracker too while we're doing it. Cause it makes sense. Yeah. Play the jingle for rumor tracker. Is there a jingle for rumor tracker? No, we need to, we need to, we need to get one. (laughs) I'll I'll work on that. We need to write a sort of thing. Um, but uh, it seems that the LA Galaxy tendered the offer on the 8 million euro uh, buyout clause that was in Paint Sills. 
uh, contract, which is about $8.5 million when you do all the conversion and all that stuff. So the $8.5 million contract, which Gank then has to accept, right? They don't, they don't have a choice. This isn't a thing. It's a buyout clause, which basically says you pay the money, you buy out the contract, the, con the contract is yours, the player is yours, right? And so now it was really about paint sell and whether or not they could agree to terms. Now, this, That's the kicker. Yep. this seems that this has progressed past that because I would feel that Will wouldn't be out there saying, oh, this is, we we're in a real good spot unless, I mean, if you're like too far away, you're not going to say we're in a real good spot, right? You're like, we're, mm -hmm. we're still trying. You would say a lot of things because you wouldn't be sure. This is, it seems Kuntz is saying that this is close, that this, that we feel pretty good about where we're at. So we'll see as that develops. But the big deal is that we were sort of watching and waiting to see what paint sill would end up being. And at one time it was a three-star rumor and we bumped it up to five stars because I had heard about this rumbling before Will had talked about everything. So we are in the five-star territory, which is it's hot right now. You should pay attention to it. I really do think that, that paint sill is, is the guy that they're looking for. And they're, this seems real close to being done a lot closer yeah. than it was, you know, just a little while ago. Yeah. Doesn't have the fire emoji. I think you, you have to have, have the official LA times story already written to, right. to have the fire emoji attached to it, but it is promising. Uh, to me, this is really exciting. I don't think I've talked about, you know, Joseph Paintsell since I've been on the show and it's, you know, someone who right now is playing with the Ghanaian national team at the African, uh, cup, uh, shout out to Comets SC, Black Galaxy fans. They've been doing a lot of AFCON updates. So they're kind of filling in on, uh, you know, the players to watch there. So he's someone who's with their national team right now. And I think that says it right there. Someone who is away with their national team, who they rely on as a player. He's come off the bench today, I believe. He started uh, the first game. So again, that's the type of player that you want. And then the league he's coming from with the Belgian league and it, with Gink. This is, you know, <laughs> I, I don't say this in a mean way, but like we got a real player. This is not someone who, you know, is, you know, could be something or as an aging person who used to have it. This is someone who currently right now, you know, is a baller. And I think that's something that's really exciting that the galaxy are, have put together. I, I dare I say like a sneaky good team, not right. a team that jumps off the page and it's like, wow, look at this overwhelming, you know, talent. Someone thing like when you look at the inter Miami roster, you're like, man, look at all those names. This, the, the roster sheet won't jump out at you. But I think when you look at the the resume of these players and the type of players that they are, this is really exciting. And something I don't know that we've talked about it, uh, Gabriel Peck being left-footed. Uh, I know he's mostly played on, on the right-hand side, but I would imagine maybe it could make sense to put him on the left, kind of serving it in. You put Pinsel on the right, putting it in, and then you have Dan Jovalic you know, with the revival, the comeback season. So this, I th I'm just really excited about the moves that they're meaning, making. And I, I, I can see why Will Kuntz is pleased Right. Uh, with the way things have gone so far, if everything progresses right. towards the finish line like it's supposed to. Well, look through the midfield. You have Triple P, right? You have Peck, Pooj, and Paintsill, right? Right there. And then Oof. you have Jovalich up top who's going like to change his name to, yeah. to another P, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you know, the professor out there. Uh, I don't know. You know, what what's it, what was... Uh, we, we call them the bishop. The yeah, bishop, I was going to say, yeah. is there... Can you spell that with a P? We can't call them the pawn. The P pawn doesn't no, no, play. No, no, no. It doesn't work. No, no. Yeah. We, won't, we won't do that. <laughs> it's insulting. It was uh, Tom Bogert was going through and sort of ranking, I think, uh, Ross and looking at things and, and sort of and the galaxy sort of smack dab in the middle and was like, hey, they're getting better the whole deal. And he's like, if they get paint soul, then he says they have one of the most potent offenses in Major League Soccer. And he was basically saying, even if Dayon Yovel, it just has to be like an average MLS striker yeah. in that system and he will be just fine. Um, all guys goal dangerous, uh, pet goal dangerous, paint still goal, goal dangerous, mm -hmm. uh, Pooj goal dangerous. So you have sort of the ability and um, I think the other part of this is it just the running that I think the galaxy will be able to do this year as well. Um, if this all sort of comes across, but it feels like it's, it's getting closer. So let's continue with, uh, with will. Uh, I did ask him whenever I got my chance about Carlos Vela, because I was tired of hearing it quite honestly. <laughs> I was going to say, were we, are we going to say the name? I usually dance around not mentioning the other club's name. But oh no, I'll happily, <laughs> I, I, I killed this rumor like a really long time ago. This was, you were still in LA whenever I, I say, killed this, this is rumor. old news. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I said, I asked Will basically, you know, I, I was, I was looking for, and I was phrasing it as, as in, would you, would you like to retain the services? You know, you put somebody on retainer, that type of thing. Um, I think he meant like, oh, try to bring them back. Um, but here's what Will said about Carlos Vela. Uh, well, we can't retain him because he never played for us. Uh, but no, I mean, Carlos and I have a you know, pre-existing relationship from our time working together uh, in the past. But uh, no, there are no imminent conversations to have Carlos join our group. 
Yeah, and I know people are going to be said, he said imminent. He's leaving the door open. Well, yeah, because he knows Carlos Vela. Um, you know, that type of thing. You never close You never close the door and say no yeah. completely, right? This is this is a pre-existing relationship. Yeah. yeah, especially on that. So, you know, I'm sure. But no, this is not happening. So all of those sources that were out there trying to give me crap about stuff and say, you don't know what you're talking about. And I got a whole bunch of people in my DMs going, well, a lot of guys are talking about it. Kevin called me and was like, you know, TUDNA is talking about uh, about about Carlos Vela. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. It's not happening. Like, this is all fake. <laughs> They've it's, never been wrong. It's, certainly. Yeah, yeah, it's drummed up for clicks and you guys were clicking. Right. So uh, so the whole deal on that. So that got killed as well. So that's sort of on the rumor tracker, which, by the way, you look on the rumor tracker. Is it on there? Yes, it is. Oh, look way down there where it's <laughs> dead. World famous skull and crossbones it's there. It's dead. That's a dead rumor. It's been a dead rumor for a little while. So anyway, that was sort of the the stuff there uh, that we uh, that we got talked to Will. Will had a bunch of really interesting things to talk about. And so uh, if you get a chance, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to post the full video or how it's going to work. There's a lot of video um, going up. But let's get to uh, Greg. A Vanny. lot of people spoke also. It seemed like there was a lot so of people many available. So many guys. Um, I'll get through the whole list here. And, and we can. My Yoshida... Um, let's see. Jonathan Bond was in there. Mark Delgado, uh, Diego Fagundes, who is like the most likable guy in the world. But between Maya Yoshida, who gets instant respect and, and Diego Fagundes, who's just like the, the nicest guy. Um, you know, you got, you got a lot of guys. Jalen Neal spoke. Um, I'm trying to think who else, maybe that was it. I don't know. I'm missing somebody I can tell, but uh, I'll look through the list again, uh, and sort of do it, but let's talk uh, real quick uh, from Greg Vanny, by the way. Uh, let's see. Is it Popo Zhao? Is that, is that how you say that? Am I going to say something you know, wrong? I, I've am I seen Popo Zhao. Am I going to get canceled? Are, are we going to talk about Kevin Federline and Britney Spears? That's, I believe, you know, there's a relationship to that phrase. He Didn't he have a song, Popo Zhao? Isn't that what that I have was? No, I have no This, this to you. This, <laughs> Do, am this, I showing my, my age? And no, my... you're on your own. I just didn't. <laughs> yeah, right, there's enough. some pop stuff I didn't right. know. It's always been the case. My co-hosts have always been better with pop than, than me. But anyway, $10 super chat uh if dayon is the guy and future does he get a delorean uh also if caligari ever recovers and feels he wants to come back is there ever an option clause for the future um i well, you didn't mention and then at the end he says popo's out party people i don't i so still, is that i don't know i <laughs> well, feel old you, you, is this you like, mentioned kevin and bean uh kevin Ryder, right you know right. who ga, galaxy fan they used to play that clip and i think that's part of why okay. It, it was in, it was in, is this Kevin hiding? The, is this like, is it this, could be, is, it, it, it wouldn't have met. I, this could be a burner. Yeah. Could, it, who it, knows? But I like that. Yeah. I like that people. But I also like, it. I was thinking about this. This is a tangent, but yes. we're going to go there. Okay. Here we go. It's the preseason. It, a Britney Spears song came on, on my, my Spotify. I have that DJ where it kind of shuffles through. And can we stop pretending that she didn't have just absolute bangers? bangers. Just I mean, bangers. absolutely. I mean, they're, bangers. They're, I mean, if someone looked in my car and, and saw the hammer, you know, blasting some Britney Spears, oh I'd get God. some weird looks. But let's not pretend no. like these things were just not no absolute bombassos. So yeah. just just got to shout out Britney Spears. That's that's fine. I understand. That's a that's a good <laughs> that's a good solid take. Those were right. and if they come on the radio right now, you if they're like at, if you're at a wedding and they play Britney Spears, everybody's like, oh my God, it's Britney Spears. It's like, oh my, this is so awesome, right? I was my wife and I were talking about like songs that are instantly sort of that. Uh, and Dua Lipa now is sort of taking over a yeah. whole bunch of those. You hear her song, you're like, oh, we're dancing. Oh. Like, this is awesome. Amazing. Uh, I love Jake, Dua Lipa. Jake loves Dua Lipa. So whenever, oh. when it, his first song he ever liked was was Levitating, right? And so he was, that one came on the radio and he started banging, banging, bopping his head. And he's <laughs> back there. I'm like, man, we're going to have to take you to a concert. Just you and me. Leave mom at home. Um, so, <laughs> I was uh, going to say, I'd, I'd like to, Uncle Eric would like to yeah, yeah, I tag figured. along to yeah. the Dua Lipa show. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. No reason. No reason. Um, so anyway, yes, yeah, so total side tangent I, it, <laughs> as, as it goes, um, with Caligari, you know, I'm sure that ship has sailed, uh, you know, will they ever look in that direction again? Yeah, I think they could, if he recovers and the whole deal, but guess what? Other people are also watching him and watching his recovery because he played yeah. really well. Could you see him back in MLS? hundred percent. Somebody could be like, Oh, well, he's playing well. We're going to go grab him. I mean, uh, if you look at some of the smarter moves we've seen sort of in major league soccer, Eric, I think we've sort of seen the ability for some teams to get rid of players and then, other teams to go get those players and bring them back from wherever they, they, they went. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, yeah. there's a, a path back for sure. I would love to see him again in an LA galaxy shirt. The relationship is there. It's just unfortunate the way things played out, but, uh, if he's healthy again and playing well, I'd happily greet him back. But you, you already kind of took the words out of my mouth. If he's playing well enough, he's going to land somewhere and the, he may be beyond the galaxy's budget at that time. By the time you look at his age and progression and form, uh, he could be someone who may end up uh, somewhere 
you know, above MLS. Right. Uh, let's get to Greg Vanny. Greg Vanny was talking about uh, the players that weren't there, right? This is the big one, right? So we sort of have to start here so that way we can understand the players who aren't here. And there are some, some bigger names here. I mean, it's Ricky should be in next week. He's in the final stages of his rehabilitation and uh, the protocol that he's been put on in, in terms of Spain between our guys and their guys. Just got one more visit with the doc to see where he's at, but he's doing his work there and then he'll join in. Um, <clears throat> Mickey should be any in any time in the next within the next week. I think he's just in the final, getting his passport back to travel. Uh, so you know, with others, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, yeah, Gaston is just in a return to play. He's probably two or three weeks away from really getting into like maximum training stuff. Probably three weeks. Uh, Martin is close. I mean, he's gone through parts of training sessions, so I would say within the next week he'll probably be back in uh, into full training. Eric is just uh, Zav's just been sick, so he'll be back in tomorrow, I think. Um, others, uh, I don't know if there's others, but everybody else I think is getting close. You know, with uh, the other guys, the DP guys that everybody's worrying about uh, and thinking about. Hopefully soon. Uh, you know, different circumstances in diff- each of those situations, but hopefully. Not too far down the road, if not sometime early in February, we start to see those faces. All right. Now, he was asked real quick, and let's start with Ricky Pooj. Ricky Pooj uh, is the big one here. Still the high ankle sprain, recovery, all that stuff. Now, from what you can sort of read from what Vanny is saying is that really he has been working, training, and doing stuff. This is just sort of the final graduation from that program, doing all the stuff that he's doing in Spain and then coming back over here into the United States. So I think he expected him next week type of thing, right? Yeah. So um, I, I still don't like it. I no, still don't like no, no. it at all. Well, well, <laughs> when you, I saw that he, he was still dealing with ankle you know, an ankle issue and, you know, not back from Spain and finishing. I did not like reading that. I did not like hearing about it. So it, it, um, hopefully it all gets resolved and it is towards the end, like Benny is explaining. Right. Um, but, but I did not like reading that. I did, you know, clutch my pearls uh, w- when I saw that. Well, I mean, there's that. And then pair it with Gaston Brugman still three weeks away yes. from being <laughs> full training. Right. And so you're sort of like, okay, this is, you're looking at starting lineup for the first game and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, Brugman is a maybe. Right. And OK, so that's not there. Uh, we talked to Mark Delgado. He said that he was doing fine. He feels good. So he's all set, that type of thing. Uh, but Bergman not being there, Ricky Pooj not being. It's like once you can see him running around, you're going to feel better. But you can't you, ha- you we can't see that yet. Right. So um, yeah. I think you should I think you should be nervous about it. I, I, mm-hmm. Quite honestly, I think Ricky Pooj, you should be nervous. about it. Gaston Bergman, you should be nervous about it. Martin seems like he's right on the cusp of coming back. So less worried about that. Plus, there's cover there. You're less worried about Martin yeah. because you have Maya and you have Jalen Neal. Jalen Neal dealing with a groin injury right now says that he's going to work back from that and that he should be good to go by the time everything kicks off for uh, for the start of the season. But I mean, start of the season is a little further away. It, to me, the way he was saying it is, it's not going to be very long for him to be out, and then he'll be back out training sort of fully and being ready and integrated and ready for the season. So yeah. uh, you saw that. Um, Zavaleta when, with the il- illness, not a big deal. Uh, Miki Yamane, uh, you know, waiting on visa stuff I'm and saying, passports yeah, and right. all that fun stuff. Our, right? our, fa- our favorite thing to talk about is, you know, with the, you know, what is it, P1 visas and all the yep. things that you have to worry about to get through. So Yamane is in the middle of that. One thing I want to shout out, Logan in the chat putting, you know, do you notice Vanny not stressed anymore? We've had this conversation off, off mic. And I was, it's funny when Vanny started talking, it's like, oh yeah, Greg Vanny is still the coach. You know, I, how relieved must he feel that he doesn't have to be out in front of every single right. soundbite and, you know, question and everything talking about the Academy, talking about, you know, rumors, talking about boycotts, talking about this. He's probably you know, I, I don't notice any difference in the way he speaks. He doesn't seem right. less stressed, you know, just based on the audio. But I'm, I can imagine how relieved he is that he just gets to focus on the first team he, and the games in front of him. He doesn't have to worry. And, and I know the fans are going to hate this. He doesn't have to worry about the external noise. He can just focus on on his one job that he has. That's got to feel great <laughs> to have those things taken off of his plate. Uh, so, you know, that, that doesn't mean there's no pressure on him because oh, he's pressure. still got to feel yeah. that, yeah. you know, he knows that, that there's not a lot of rope because there are other pieces in place of people in charge. But it, it probably does feel good to not have to deal with all the other, uh, you know, extra excrement uh, going on on the outside. Uh, actually, he was so he was sort of asked about this. And this was one of the questions I was going to ask. Scott French asked it, which is good. Uh, but he sort of asked, you know, you, with Will becoming the GM, is there any friction there? Uh, and then Greg Vanny had this to say, and I think this goes to what you were talking about. Yeah, no friction. I mean, this is, 
Uh, at the end of the season, I was asked, you know, about last year, and I said I have too many things on my plate, right? There's, uh, you know, Dan and I had this discussion. There's just too many things that I was involved with or uh, were on my plate and uh, drawing a little bit of attention here, a little bit of attention there. Uh, and at times, honestly, I felt like I was helicoptering in to coach the team and then helicoptering out to answer some other questions or problems and whatever the case may be. This is, this, you know, is a, is a great sort of adjustment. I don't really care who I, who I, is my boss or who isn't my boss. For what I want is the group to be successful. For that to happen, I need to be able to focus on the team, uh, and the group, uh, and to make sure and work with Will to make sure the guys that we bring in are guys that are going to fit inside of what we're trying to do, uh, and the vision for the team. Um, but it's his job and the guys up there, their job is to go get, go get the players that fit and make sure that uh, we can get the best ones in. Uh, and my job is to put them on the field and help them to, to win games. So I think it just it will, it puts us all into the positions that can make, help the club be as successful as we are supposed to be and need to be. All right, there we go. This, yeah. it's my, This is my favorite game. I, I love when I say something and then Vanny comes in and says the exact same thing. I think this has happened a few times with you know game analysis. I'll say, you know, I noticed this, and then Vanny comes in with a clip, and he, he says it. I'm like, okay, so I'm not crazy. I'm not insane. You know, he said all those things that it looked like from the outside looking in that he was probably feeling. So it's nice to have that validated and to have him come out and say it. Can I be a pessimist for a second? Isn't that what you're going to say? Aren't you going to say, oh, man, I was just I had too many things on my plate. And all, isn't that what you're going to say whenever they take somebody and move it them is, around but it, you? It's also it was also kind of painfully obvious that his plate was way too full last season. So I, there I, was a lot going on. There was yeah. a lot going on. Well, here was the thing. And it was funny because um I was, again, this was a question I was going to ask and, and it sort of got asked and by Greg himself, he was sort of goes into, it, but it's like, you look at what Greg went through. Remember at the end of the season, he was, you know, in tears talking to us whenever, uh, whenever things didn't go. And he was sort of like, I've rarely had a time in my 20 years, whether as a player or as a coach or anything in this league where I didn't have a say in the playoffs. Right. And he goes, and that was frustrating and I didn't like it. And listen, there's a lot of reasons for that. And he went through and he talked about making the defense better. He said on day one, I walked in and I told everybody we're going to be a good defensive team. Right. And he goes, you know, he talked about the goalkeepers. He talked about the defenders. Um, by the way, Greg Vanny very much being like, I don't have to name a star starting goalkeeper right now it's the beginning of the season there are three of them they get to battle it out they get to they get to figure it out and well we're going to start the best one which is the Another correct answer of right saw. yes yeah. exactly and you're like cool the whole deal by the way jonathan bond talked to us uh during uh during this time and uh jonathan is usually a pretty easy coming guy i i could there was 10 there was more tension than i'm used to now it could be he just had the <laughs> Yeah, whoa, my that was that was a fun noise it made. Um, we just had the uh, the he just had the birth of a, a child about a month ago. I think a baby boy, um, and so he was talking about that um, and whether and we were sort of asking him how or I asked him how everything was going. Uh, oh, Eric, did we lose you? Like I we can't you can't hear me, but I can hear I can't hear you either. I don't know where you went. Um, okay, so uh, it might be you because I'm still broadcasting and so the whole deal. So why don't you uh, why don't you see if you can fix that on your side and we'll we'll go from here. But Jonathan Bond was doing that. Um, you know, he sort of talked about the guys and with McCarthy being in and all that fun stuff. It was uh, it was very interesting to sort of see how that works um, and and whether or not, um, you know, he was going to how he was going to react and how he was going to do all that stuff. Right. So. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but there felt like there was a little more tension in that. But one of the things we talked, I wanted to hear about Greg Vanny was, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I was going to say we had some technical difficulties, but I'm glad to be back in it. I knew we were talking about bond and kind of that seriousness. I, I don't know if you're going to continue to talk about Vanny or not, but the yes. one thing that I did want to, um, you know, discuss with Vanny and we had some discussions with Alexi Lawless and Landon Donovan, you know, about the state of the galaxy. And I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll have that, those audio clips to you. But one of the things that Alexi Lawless did mention and Kevin Baxter wrote it in the story is that he was, you know, a bit surprised that with all the shakeups in the front office, that Greg Vanny was still there, uh, you know, because, you know, it seemed like there was a cleaning of house of, you know, players, you know, front office executives out and the, with the galaxy's poor performance that he found it odd um, that Greg Vanny was still there. In talking with some other people who know who Greg Vanny is, there's, you know, is that a coaches conference or a lot of coaches, right. people who are familiar with Greg Vanny. The word that I hear on Greg Vanny is that for everyone who talks about him is that he's a good coach. He knows what he's doing. He, he, know, he knows his way around a system. He knows his way around the league and that people are almost confused as to why it hasn't worked out with the galaxy. Right. So 
for take that for what it's worth that the people who are familiar with him and familiar with the league and familiar with coaches and seeing good coaching say that Greg Vanny has it in there and just for whatever reason it hasn't worked out with the Galaxy. So while, you know, the accountability needs to be there if the results don't happen this year, I've been, you know, someone who's been a proponent of keeping the seat very warm for, for Greg Vanny because the results at the end of the day need to be there. But, you know, I, I from from what I understand from people who who know his system and know his coaching is that he he has it. It's just a matter of there's been a lot of disconnects and weird things happening that it hasn't worked, you know, with the galaxy, but it, but it is there. So that was kind of comforting to hear, you know, people who know the game and people who know Greg kind of say, ha- have a vote of confidence in him. Alexi Lawless not being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was sort of interesting with all the stress that was sort of going on. I think the question was sort of asked, like, did you get a chance to sort of step away from it? And he was like, uh, and so uh, he talked about what he did sort of after, um, to sort of clear his mind a little bit and reset. And what he did was he actually went and go, went and visited other teams, right? And so he so he he sort of spelled that out. So let's hear from Greg here about the end of this and a little funny interchange with everybody. I spent some time at Chelsea, was at West Ham for a little while, uh, went to Crystal Palace for a bit. Um, what else? I had some of the guys, some of the, our guys were at Liverpool. We're mostly in the London and the, and the EPL clubs. Um, I went to a bunch of games, probably saw 12 maybe uh, between EPL games and uh, uh, and Europe, Europa games and, and Champions League. So went to a lot of games, watched a lot of teams that I think are uh, in our wheelhouse for what we've talked about in terms of our style of play and things that we would like to do. So it was really, again, just clearing my mind and, and resetting on some very specific details that I think are important, important for us. Of course, what else would I do? <laughs> well, I mean, that there's you never. I'm never going to get fully away from that. But it was also I took my family, and so the you know the the boys were with me. Uh, my wife was with me. I, honestly, our family hasn't been away on a vacation other than going home to see our families in Arizona. We haven't been on a on a vacation in ten years, if that. So just us getting away and during the days going and. Enjoying London and different things. We were over in uh, Portugal for a little bit. Uh, it happened to be around my youngest playing in a tournament in Portugal, but uh, just to get away and do something, right? Not to be inside of this building and down here, and uh, but to be somewhere else. But I, I will never be more than a couple steps away from a game or from uh, from the sport and all that. So it's all good. All right, there is a, there there was Greg Vanny there. Uh, talking about getting away, going to visit some things, just some, I don't know. For me, I'd rather know what the guys like sort of did in the off season that is like different than, than going to soccer. And that was like a different sort of take <laughs> on, on Greg I, Benny. Yeah. I also feel very seen with that. It's someone who, who lives and breathes soccer. Yeah. It's like, you know, what did you do? You know, when the soccer game wasn't on, well, I watched clips of old soccer games is right. what I did. So, so I feel very seen that soccer guys like soccer, you know, it, go it, figure. It's funny. Um, I think I've told the story before, but Ben Olson, uh, whenever he was, after he was done with DC United and was sort of hanging out in DC, remember he had an art gallery, right? In DC, like he was doing art, he was doing the whole thing, like still into the soccer thing, but he was really getting his art, like selling pieces, this, a legitimate artist, the whole deal. And yeah, I, think, I remember hearing this. Yeah. Yeah. I did and, not know this. And I, I didn't, I, you know, I've, I heard the story secondhand, of course. Um, I trust the person who told it to me, so it's, it's probably true. But uh, Greg Berhalter was in town and he was like, hey, Ben was like, hey, Greg, you want to come over and see my art and stuff like that? And so like Greg came over and and Ben showed him the art and the whole deal. And uh, somebody had talked to Ben. And he's like, you know, Greg, Greg's a soccer guy. Uh, Greg Berhalter, he's just a soccer guy. Like he can't look at art. He just wants to talk about soccer. Like the yeah. whole time he was here, he's just talking about that's that's Greg Vanny, right? It's like you can't take him anywhere. He's just like, oh, cool. You know, oh, I'm at a I'm at a, a, a you know, ballet. It's like it's like, oh, let me talk about soccer. You know, it's it's just <laughs> you can't switch it off. And this is for him as relaxing as going and being still part of that whole thing. So, um, yeah, it should be, uh, it should be a lot of fun, um, just to sort of see where it takes. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure, uh, the galaxy, you know, for my taking are, are building a little slower than I'd like to see with people coming in. I'm still of the opinion that there is plenty of time to get everybody coming back. I expect like a wave of people all to show up at once and then that'll make everybody feel better. And there'll be full <laughs> teams and like all this other stuff that's sort of going around. Um, but yeah, that's, that's sort of, sort of where it stands with that um the guys uh like i said we talked to uh to maya yoshida and maya was talking about miki and they saying um 
Maya doesn't really have a relationship. And if you heard Greg Vanny also talked about this, they don't, he doesn't have a relationship with him, but he played on the national team with him. He knows him. And so uh, Maya was talking all about Mickey and how he was going to mm-hmm. come in and how he's a smart player and how he's going to be really good. And Greg Vanny was talking about his versatility, being able to play on the outside or even come in as part of a three center back set, like and sort of stretch him. They can invert him inside to play more of like, you know, the wing back position in, in those areas on the right. So they're really both sides of the ball to the whole deal. Maya was super. And he go, Maya was like, this is the, the thing that's going to be hardest for him is that he's never played outside of Japan before. And he goes, and that's going to be an adjustment. He goes, but I'm here. And that's a real thing. Also. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, well, Maya said that whenever he was a teenager, he went and played, I think for, for Schalke. Right. And so whenever he was young, he had to try, he had to go somewhere and he goes, and that was a huge adjustment. Like the language barrier, all that stuff. And he says, Mickey needs to learn like, like better English and the whole deal. And I think Scott French asked, he goes, was Los Angeles easier to adjust than some or some other cities? And Maya goes, Oh yeah, totally. He goes, you can get everything. He goes, just here in Torrance, you can get everything you need. <laughs> like that's Japanese. Like there's Japanese yeah. markets, there's Japanese food. Like you can, there's people who speak yeah. Japanese. There's a, there's a huge community, you know, just really outside the stadium and in that area that has this really big community. He goes, and that'll make it so much easier for him. He goes, and I'm going to be here and I'm going to be here to help him. This is Maya. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here to help him. I'm going to be here to help his family. He goes, we have that taken care of. That's not going to be an issue. Right? Like it was sort of just like, I got this guys. Don't that's worry my about captain. It. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, you, you love hearing that. And so from everything that's being described about Yamane, uh, you know, we talked about Caligari being a bummer that he was out. It sounds like we got another someone who's kind of in that vein, that Julian Araujo versatile. You can play him, you know, further up, you can, you know, play him in the, you know, three man back line. So to me, this is exciting. You know, the way he's being kind of hyped up, uh, by, by his, his, his teammates. And, and we had, I believe someone in the discord, uh, you know, pop in and talk about they were a fan of the team that he's coming from and mentioning you know he's he's been solid he's someone that you know the team is moving you know on from him but he is someone who played an integral role at that you know at in the league and on that team for a long time so it is something that's really exciting that's the beauty and i'll say it i'll shout out southern california and talk about how much i miss it you can get anything of any culture southern california within a 30 mile you know 40 mile radius you can find whatever you know, you know, a cultural center or cuisine. And so that's kind of the nice thing. I, I, I imagine Los Angeles is an easier transition uh, than maybe some other cities. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that that is going to be one of those things where you can sit there and say, okay, this is a plus and this is a plus for, you know, the, the LA galaxy and a plus for, for everything that's going on. Um, you know, it sounds, it just sounds really good. I'm, I'm, you know, you can really sort of see that, that the, the galaxy are, are sort of, setting themselves up hopefully for success with getting somebody like Miki Yamane in there as well. Um, let's see who are all the people I want to get, make sure I get all the people. Uh, my Yoshida talked, uh, Mark Delgado talked uh, anything from Mark. He was basically saying they were asking how he was feeling healthy because he had some issues. He says, I'm hundred percent healthy. That's all good. And they're like, you know, we know you had some, some other issues last year. And he was like, yeah, he goes, you know, that's something I just have to deal with. He, we still don't know what it is. He's not talking mm-hmm. about it. And that's cool. But he goes, it's, it's something that um, will only get better when I stop playing. So that's like just something I'm going to have to learn to deal with and, and work with whatever that is. That's something it is. You know, I hope it's not concussions or anything like that, because that that's one of those things that's that's a lot more scary. Yeah, I I don't want to speculate. And that's someone's health and he hasn't, you know, mentioned it. But I I do notice on the behind the scenes stuff, he wears his glasses quite a bit. So I don't know if it's something vision related or something like that. But you don't want to you don't want to speculate. You don't don't want (laughs) to. I don't want to speculate about his spectacles. But, you know, it does seem like there has been a, you know, a little bit of a change in it. But hopefully he is healthy and, and, and back in it because. With Brugman, Delgado, and Puj in the midfield, when they were when they were on, they were they were a solid uh, highlight of the LA Galaxy last season. So hopefully it does work out. Um, so uh, so talking with that, so we talked uh, about Mark Delgado. We talked about Jonathan Bond and just sort of what he was saying. So um, you know, again, they're talking about the defense needing to be better. Everybody knows. Everybody got asked about the sixty-seven goals, and I think Greg Van even said when you sh- when you ship close to seventy goals, that you just can't have a good team. And so he's he says, I'm not putting that on the goalkeepers, but I'm putting that on everybody, a team defense. It's not just the back line. It's a team defense, which is what we've heard uh, sort of before. Uh, Jalen Neal was in there as well, um, talking a little bit, and he was talking about just getting back and healthy and and all those things. Uh, Tom Braun sort of mentioned him in an article uh, and said, 
you know, uh, that they were asking about what's who's the next big name for the LA Galaxy. He goes, it could be a kid like Jalen Neal, right? The whole deal. So um, there's some pressure, but I think Jalen is the kind of guy who uses that to sort of motivate than to for it to mm-hmm. paralyze him. Um, so he could be a, a, a big sort of addition there. I mean, you know, the big takeaway from all this is, yes, the LA Galaxy are out there. Yes, they're training. No, there's, I mean, really, there's a short team right now. So yeah. they're incomplete. But it's starting to feel real. There's there's little sprinkles happening. Yeah. It, it was funny. Jonathan Bond said this. They said, you know, does this year feel different? And he goes, every year feels different. He goes, we're all, he goes, he goes, it's the beginning of the season. Every year you come in, it's different than the year before. He goes, everybody's always optimistic. He goes, he goes, because what else do you have? Like, yeah, sort of, there's, he, there's zero just, losses in the loss column. Yeah. Right. You know, he's got some of that dad, like, you know, he's got that dad energy now sort of being like, let me, let me just lay it out for all of you people. So well, you can understand what this is. All right. We don't yeah. need to sugarcoat this or make it anything that it's not. Yeah, um, I keep a child alive now. That's my, that's, that's my sole my, responsibility. My, right? This playing soccer business is. It's not a big deal. Dude, he was uh, he was talking a little bit, and I, I sort of asked him how the offseason was, if he got to travel anywhere, and I knew the answer was no. I was going to let him <laughs> yeah. talk about uh, you know his kid, and uh, the uh, young boy was was about a month ago. Um, and so uh, he's just sort of right in the thick of it. He goes, my wife right now is sort of, he goes, it's kind of hard to get sleep. He goes, but my wife right now is letting me sleep like in the other rooms. That way I can get sleep whenever it gets too bad. He goes, because we got training and all this stuff. And he goes, I don't know how long that's going to last. And everybody's like, yeah, not very long, dude. It's that, that, that won't last very long. So um, we'll see how the whole thing goes and uh, and sort of see where everything uh, where everything lands there again. I think we lost you again, Eric, because it just made that noise in my headset again. So I'll let you do your thing and figure out how that comes back here uh, in a second. So um, that's sort of where we sit. If we go back to the uh, to the rumor tracker, um, just to sort of uh, talk about everything and get you caught up. Um, we talked about Gabriel Peck. Uh, we talked about Joseph Payne. So the one that's not on here. You know, Rukavina is going to be an interesting one. I'm still interested to see if that still comes across the line. I don't think it's primary right now. I think it's a secondary. So you're still looking at depth there. Uh, 19-year-old, there's been some rumors that basically they don't want uh, the Dynamo Zagreb is, is looking for three and a half million instead of three million. We'll see what that ends up being. For $500,000 on a U22 contract, I don't know that anybody's really going to care. But when we talk about an overall budget that the Galaxy have, you still have to sort of fit it into the money that you actually have available to buy people with. So it does matter. Um, I like people are like, it's only $500,000. Who cares? Right. And it's like one of those things like, yeah, it's not your money. You know, it's, it's somebody's money. It's coming from somewhere. Um, but, but it, but yeah. it is exciting to see, you know, someone who, you know, we talked about the, the DP level strikers that we might be getting, but to see someone who is involved in a youth setup as a depth piece in the U 22, it's exciting to see what they can come in. You know, it's a commercial underground set. If my mic setup uses batteries, I'm hardwired in. I don't know what's going on. I have heard that maybe there's a former Galaxy executive who's hacking the show that's causing some <laughs> microphone issues. I did want to share a point on Jonathan Bond. I don't know if there's a study, you know, if a goal, goalkeeper's hands improve once they once they have a child oh, baby. holding I them. I don't know if that that counts as a drill to make it work. But uh, yeah, that, those, those are my thoughts on it. It's like, exciting to see you know, what yeah. the final moves are going to be to get across the line. Yeah. By the way, uh, Lasso sort of asks if, if the galaxy do close in on paint. So is it, it was, does that mean nothing on a Listen, I think that crosses off Sosa, Solari. Um, and those are the only real rumors that were anything else is not really a rumor that's down below uh, three stars. Cause we wouldn't put it on the board. Um, one of the ones that came out today was, uh, Albert Elise, who was, uh, the former Houston dynamo player playing over in, uh, in league league du, uh, in France. Um, I just can't every time it just lead to it. Um, league, uh, yeah. Sounds even worse. So yeah. League, league, un, league deux. <laughs> uh, so uh, League Two in France. Um, and there's rumors out there. Now the rumors uh, were busted today by Alex Ruiz. Give him credit on that. I can also tell you that I can confirm this. So in case you were doubting Alex, which you shouldn't, uh, but he's been told that the uh, lease rumors are nine months old. This is this was yeah. like the replacement for Chicharito at one point. Like they were sort of like, hey, maybe we could swing a DP in as sort of a winger and make this all happen, but they ended up getting Diego Fagundes, right? The whole day. So you can sort of see, but nine months old. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, I think it was, this is one of those things that was breaking in the chat during one of our shows. And then it turned out to be like an April fool's right. thing by, you know, a, a, one, a media source. So I'm not going to be fooled again and have another uh, Sasha question situation. If you want to, to get into that story. So, okay, so this was this was back. Landon Donovan uh, was just about getting ready to retire, which is where you set this set the stage for this. Now, we didn't know (laughs) that at the time, but he was about ready to announce his retirement. Uh, I had been working with some people around the club and sort of doing stuff now, again, not within the club, around the club. 
uh, on some things. And so we had heard rumors and there was rumors that Sasha Kleshen was trying to come to the LA Galaxy. Now, this Bruce Arena time, Bruce was absolutely 100% trying to get Sasha Kleshen in um, and then tried, I think, multiple times. And this was the like the last time they tried it and he couldn't get it done. Right. The whole deal. So uh, he was with Anderlicht at the time. Uh, so he was over there. So basically, I had caught wind that uh, that somebody that he the LA Galaxy had signed him. Right? Somebody had said, "Oh man, you know, whole deal." Now uh, I tell this story because I get this all wrong. Right? This is the thing that goes all sideways. I've talked to Sasha about this as well, um, but I got it wrong. And where it all went wrong, and it's really like it's as you're listening, you're getting. When you're young and you're not paying attention to what you should be paying attention to, you get excited by the chase, right? It's still fun for me to chase rumors. I enjoy it's a rush. I like breaking news. I like doing all that stuff. It's a dangerous game, though. You get it wrong and you can be really in trouble. So I got this wrong. And I will remember, I'll never forget the one thing. And this learned, this sort of taught me for the rest of my rumor chasing days um, is uh, was this one person and they're they're like, yeah, man, there's going to be a press conference. And I'm like, well, I mean, but I mean, it's so what? It's a press conference. They're like, yeah, but like, what else could it be? What well, was my favorite line, right? That I ever heard. What else could it be? Was the was the question the whole day? <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? What yeah. could possibly go wrong? So it ended up the press conference was going to be for Landon Donovan's retirement instead. So it was funny because whenever I had actually talked to the Galaxy about it, I said, well, I know there's a press conference. They're like, how do you know there's a press conference? So like, I got that part right just didn't get it right for the right reason. So I announced yeah. that that Sasha Kleshen was coming and it was all a bad deal. And uh, it taught me how to actually do that, which is always fun too. So, uh, but I was in the, you know, I was in my own head there for for a good like three, four weeks and where I was like, I don't need to break news. I don't need to do stuff. Um, you know, the whole deal. So um, yeah, I learned, I learned yeah. a lesson, which but by the way, times. which by the way, whenever I say that Carlos Vela isn't coming, Carlos Vela isn't coming. I'm not telling you guys stuff <laughs> that I don't already know. <laughs> Right. This so is at this point we can confirm it. And the funny thing about that story also is when Sasha Question did finally land with the LA Galaxy, I believe they shared the graphic that was already created and done in anticipation of him when you know, like they signed him in, in right. you yep. know, twenty fifteen right. or twenty fourteen or whenever that was. Uh, so it's funny that they did you know, this was a thing that was there was smoke to it. It just it just didn't get get across the line there for was, whatever reason. There was a whole big deal about basically Bruce Arena came out and talked about that later and said, you know, sometimes you need men to be men in this league. Like he was, <laughs> he was going after stuff. Good it was old great. Bruce. Yeah, it was great. I miss I miss I miss me some Bruce for sure. Um, but anyway, so that was sort of that. Um, other than the rumor trackers that's out there, uh, you know, Rukovina is not one uh, that will go away, I believe, with the signing of, of Paintsill. That one seems mm -hmm. like that is a U22 signing, and I haven't heard of any other U22 signings. Uh, it's very much in that center space where if you hear anything that it advances and talks, it goes from four to five stars pretty quickly, but we're sort of in that holding pattern right now. Um, because I think probably at 19 and sort of with the talent that he has would be a really interesting U22 signing to yeah. come in and, and sort of back up. Then you're going to have, um, you know, you have paint cell, you have, um, you have Peck of Gwen uh, assuming, right. And then you have Fagundas in there and then you have Rukavina, right. And so, um, and then you have some of the other guys that are down the, down the roster as well. It starts to fill out the midfield and makes you feel good. Um, yeah. I've, I've been doing a lot of kind of comps or, or like for likes. It reminds me of, uh, Dejan Jovalich, when they signed him, uh, you know, U22 player right. signing. Then when he was coming off the bench, he was scoring goals off the bench. He was really dynamic and exciting. This feels like this could be something similar. Someone who you bring in, there's excitement behind them. Coming off the bench, they kind of show what they can do. And then obviously, you know, with Dejan, it's turned out a little bit differently. And there's an opportunity to make things right again. But I think that's the type of player that Rukovina could be if he is someone uh, that the Galaxy are going to have on their radar. Yeah, it'll be uh, be interesting to see. So uh, let's sort of uh, let's figure out how this all goes. I'll say that uh, I think there should be some trepidation by some of the stuff that came out. Right, the Ricky Poosh things, the Gaston Brugman yeah. not being a hundred percent that there. I think that the fact that nobody's over the line is a little reason for trepidation. Now that can go away fast. One to see Ricky Poosh run around in front of you, I think, will make you feel better. Uh, two is to get some of these signings over the line and done and completed and get guys into camp. Uh, that happens, and I think we're we're looking pretty good. So. Yeah, All right. exciting times. And good times. Uh, by the way, I do want to mention, and uh, it's becoming more and more of a thing as we as we go now. Uh, February eleventh, uh, live show at uh, Coachella, uh, at the Coachella Valley uh, Invitational. There, 
uh, we're, I, I imagine that we're going to do it after the game, um, but we're talking about the timing. The game is at 10 a.m., by the way. That game is early, right? It's against Austin, yeah. I believe. It's at like <laughs> 10 a.m., right? So uh, at 10 a.m., there's plenty of time for you to do whatever you need to do to eventually get to the Super Bowl later that day if you're going to do that. By the way, I would suggest you get like a hotel somewhere in the in uh, in the near Coachella or an Airbnb or something like that. You spend the morning watching some Galaxy, spend some time with us at a live show, uh, which we're uh, planning on having some good guests. Um, it's exciting. Yeah. Well, you'll be near a lot of I would <laughs> Galaxy imagine. players and just, executives, just I would imagine. Shuffle yeah. them right over, right? It shouldn't be too hard. So, um, but yeah, so we're going to we're going to do exciting. that. Yeah, so get your tickets. Um, you know, and if I don't show up, you still get to go see a soccer game. Who cares? I right? was going to say it, it's, it seems like it's a hot ticket no matter what. Yeah. It is. It's a lot of fun. It's such a great time. I yes, I know it's a bit of a drive. It's like 90 minutes, you know, 90 plus minutes to get out there, but you know, in the in the early morning that you're gonna have to do to get out there, you're gonna breeze right out there on a on a what is it Sunday morning Sunday morning yeah on a Sunday morning oh, it's a Super, Super Bowl, Bowl I would so hope yeah. it's on a Sunday yeah, yeah it is um, <laughs> so so for sure uh, get out there and we'll uh, we'll we'll take a look and uh, and get to say hi to some people so we're excited about that uh, I know the hammer's not gonna be there but I, I think uh, I think I've roped in Kevin and you know let's be honest it, as long as I'm there everything will be fine so there you go somebody yeah, hit that button it's, right it's, it's your time for redemption you, you weren't able to be there for for, uh, you know, the coaches conference. So, you know, Coachella is going to be your time to shine. Yep, absolutely. It'll be, a, it'd be a lot of fun. So, um, all right. I think that's it. Anything else, Eric, you want to get to? Cause I think we sort of covered most of it. Yes. Well, we know I'm a fan of, of a nice jacket yes. right? and so, and some things like that. So I, I know that during MLS media day, my Yoshida, Jalen Neal were seen wearing, you know, the Anthem jacket for this season. We know every year the Anthem jacket is is a popular item amongst fans. And so last year it was a reversible Anthem jacket with the green, and it was kind of a cool situation. By looking at it, it looks like it's a little bit of a different material from last year. looks like it's definitely not reversible. After asking some questions about some people who might know some things, I'm hearing it's more going to be more of a shacket than a jacket, so kind of like a shirt jacket combo it's going to be a little bit of a different material so for those of you who are like myself who like uh, the anthem jacket every year this year it looks like it's going to be white looks like the material is going to be a little bit thicker so it looks like the, you know that should be coming out soon and then in terms of galaxy collabs going back to our kind of jackets and, and fashions and things like that you know last year we had the collabs with dgk with the skateboard decks we also had with menace with the their um, you know capsule collection that they had I'm hearing that the Galaxy are going to have quite a few collabs this season as well. So keep your eyes out for those collaborations. If those are your things, you know, those are going to be, you know, I don't know if you're showing some numbers on there. Could be more than that. Could be more than that. So I don't know. Could be maybe around, I don't know, maybe something maybe, like that. Who maybe, knows? Who so, so uh, you know, I'm hearing those are coming. So if you like those collaborations, there's more of them coming uh, based on what I've heard. There you go. That sounds like fun. Well, good. A lot of fun stuff coming up. Um, you know, we're getting close to Galaxy Soccer again, which is kind of fun. So I'm excited for everybody. Uh, like I said, there's that uh, scrimmage coming up on January 27th, which is closed door. Um, and then the Galaxy go out and and start uh, hitting the hitting the field to have a Dignity Health Sports Park game um, that is coming up against uh, St. Louis. Yep, that's correct. So a friendly at 1 p.m. on February 3rd. Uh, then the Galaxy go out and do their Coachella stuff with Charlotte and Austin and New York City and then uh, New York, and then eventually it all starts with uh, with Miami on 225. So a lot of things. By the way, there was a graphic today, Eric, that was showing um, like the like 38,000 miles that Miami was going to travel in order to <laughs> do their preseason I saw tour. That. And I was like, bring that on. That's I, I think that's the best gift the Galaxy could possibly have right now. The funniest thing about that is that they had the video where it showed the little plane on the world map, and it literally traveled a circle around the globe. Yep. And the funny thing is the landing spot was Miami, but they still have another, you know, 3000 miles to get to Los Angeles after that whole video that they did. The other thing that kind of makes me laugh about it is, you know, I'm going to show, I'm going to save that bookmark, that video and bookmark that schedule of the preseason. Right. And so when inter Miami is sitting, you know, in second place in the supporter shield race, and then we're talking about the Galaxy in 14th place because right. of schedule congestion. Excuse me, Excuse me. The, Thir 13th place. 13th place. Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm being more pessimistic oh, okay. because Ricky Pooja's ankle. Uh, you know, they're going to be in 14th place. We're going to say, man, they, just, they had these games on Wednesday, you know, in San Jose. And then they had to travel, you know, down to Dignity Health Sports Park. You yeah. know, I, I could understand why these players were out of gas. So <laughs> I'm, I'm hopefully way wrong. That's a guaranteed to be wrong prediction. But that's just one of those things that we're, I'm going to make note of that. If this is something that, the, you know, Miami is able to get through, 
but you know, I, I think they're going to be, <laughs> they're going to be pretty well jet lagged, uh, you know, by the time they get to Los Angeles. Uh, I mean, the galaxy can only hope get those guys, get those players in and, uh, we'll certainly, uh, rock and roll from there. So we'll have more on that and we'll talk more on Monday. So still some stuff, still a Friday to go before you don't know what kind of magical things could happen on Friday. Right. But more than likely, I think next week might be a bigger week. Although a lot of people were thinking it was going to be this week. It's been interesting to sort of listen to the timeline slide though. Whenever you're talking about the different rumors, <laughs> they're like, Ooh, they just, all of a sudden it's another week and another week. And you're like, okay, this is good. I think there's going to be some celebration here coming soon, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. All right, Eric, uh, tell people where they can find you. Let's go. All right. As always, you can find me on, on everything at hammer EV nine. So X Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads, all that fun stuff. That's at hammer EV. And then the number nine. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, on X at Jay Guessman at galaxy podcast, head on over to corner of the galaxy.com where our rumor tracker is up there. I try to update it all the time. We'll get the least rumor up there way down on the bottom is dead. Uh, and so we'll have a lot of fun with that as we continue. Uh, Gabriel Peck, Joseph Painzo, uh, the Rukavina. That's all some interesting stuff going on here uh, as the LA Galaxy get into uh, their preseason and the first start of preseason games coming up. All right. For Eric, the Portuguese Hammer, celebrating six years here on Corner of the Galaxy, I'm Josh Patrick Esman. You've been listening. You've been watching to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo. And on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.